This is a CBS News special report on Major Garrett in Washington. We come on the air with breaking news from the Middle East. The Israeli foreign minister says the Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar has been killed. Sinwar was one of three people killed during an Israeli military operation in southern Gaza. Israeli officials examined dental images and DNA evidence to confirm Sinwar's identity and therefore his death. Sinwar led Hamas since the summer and has been one of the key figures within the terror organization's political and military clashes over the years with Israel. He is also significantly the alleged mastermind behind the October 7, 2023 attack in Israel, which killed roughly 1,200 people. Since then, Israel has engaged in a devastating ground military operation in Gaza to destroy Hamas and one of its other missions to, quote, find and kill Sinwar. CBS News foreign correspondent Ramey Innocencio joins us from Tel Aviv. Ramey, this has been talked about on social media for the better part of two hours. We now, through the foreign minister, have what constitutes confirmation. What else can you tell us? Yes, that's right, Major. Uh, the Foreign Minister Israel Katz saying that this is a great military and moral achievement here, also pushing back that this is everything that they wanted against the evil axis uh, led by Iran. And images of Sinwar first started circulating around 3 p.m. local time here. It's now been about five hours or so since then. Images of what appeared then to be a dead man curled up in a pile of rubble and with a, a deep gash across the top of his head. The IDF then released a statement about an hour later saying that during operations in the Gaza Strip, they killed three terrorists and then they started checking the possibility that one of them was, in fact, Yahya Sinwar. Tests were run on his DNA, his fingerprints were checked because Israel has those records from the time Sinwar spent in prison. And uh, now, interestingly, local Israeli media are reporting that Sinwar's killing may actually have been by chance that Israeli troops were clearing the area, saw these three people, fired on them, and only when they went to inspect their bodies did they think that one of the men looked like Yahya Sinwar. And now we get that confirmation that it was. And, Ramey, in the main, Sinwar has been not that visible above ground in Gaza, as I understand it, and that has been one of the complicating factors for the Israeli Defense Forces as it has carried out its campaign in Gaza. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, it has been very difficult to try to track down where he is, of course. Uh, and we're also trying to uh, hear what Hamas has been trying to uh, have in, kind, in a kind of reaction. Hamas so far hasn't issued a statement so far, but looking ahead, uh, the first question for that group is uh, who will lead Hamas now? Uh, Israel killed Hamas's commander. We know Mohammed Daif back in July. He was called the Osama bin Laden of Gaza and another mastermind of the October 7th attacks. Uh, we know that Ismail Haniyeh was assassinated in Tehran in July the head of Hamas's political wing. Other deputies have been killed, along with thousands of Hamas fighters. Uh, so if and when a new leader is decided, Major, the question then could be whether to try to strike Israel here in retaliation. Uh, we know Hamas has been degraded over the past year, but we know it hasn't been destroyed. Or perhaps could the death of Sinwar bring Hamas to its knees in some way and then back to the negotiating table uh, for talks? But right now, we might expect that Hamas in Gaza, and as we know, they exist across the Middle East, is reeling and is in disarray. Ramey, please stand by. I want to bring in our Face the Nation moderator and our chief foreign affairs correspondent, Margaret Brennan. Margaret, what are you hearing from your sources, and can you, for the American audience, contextualize the importance of this moment? Major, uh, U.S. sources, Israeli sources tell us this is a game changer. We now have from Israel Defense Forces, from top Israeli officials, the confirmation that Hamas commander Yahya Sinwar, he was the architect of the October 7th attack on Israel, is confirmed dead. So to give Americans a sense of how significant this is to the Israelis, this is their Osama bin Laden. And on Wednesday, the Israel Defense Forces killed Sinwar and two other men in a raid in southern Gaza. An Israeli security official told CBS Today the soldiers happened to notice that one of the men just looked like Sin Sinwar. In other words, they got lucky here. And because this wasn't a combat engagement, not a bomb drop from the sky, a combat engagement, they were able to take DNA sam samples from the remains back to Israel and to confirm the death. They now have multiple sources of confirmation in the field, 
and back in Israel that the DNA matches that of Yahya Sinwar. So from this morning, from dawn, I am told by U.S. officials, they have been working to try to make this determination. We know President Biden is traveling outside of the country, but throughout the morning, he has been regularly updated aboard Air Force One. And at this point, all my reporting is that there was no U.S. role in the specific attack that killed Sinwar Wednesday. But for more than a year now, U.S. intelligence and Joint Special Operations Command have been side by side, hand in glove with the Israelis, trying to help them through intelligence sharing uh, hunt down the leaders of Hamas, including Yahya Sinwar. The top echelon of leadership has now been killed. Sinwar was the mastermind responsible for that surprise attack October 7th, an insurgent attack against one of the most sophisticated military forces in the world. It killed 1,200 Israelis. His stated intent was to help Palestinians to shake off through force Israeli rule. But his actions also led to a war between Hamas and Israel that has so far killed 42,000 of his fellow Palestinians, according to the Gaza Ministry of Health, the majority of them major women and children. So this death is potentially a game changer for the conflict, but there are a lot of unknowns. Ramey mentioned some of them. What happens to the roughly 100 remaining hostages Hamas took last year, four of them U.S. citizens? Uh, another wild card. Who steps in to take over Hamas? Will they be more willing to negotiate a deal with Israel? How does this play out, by the way, in Tehran? Remember, this conflict has spread through the region over the past year, and we have been on standby waiting for an expected Israeli retaliatory attack on Iran because of other assassinations the Israelis carried out against Hezbollah leaders, uh, another militia, that one based in Lebanon. Uh, in Gaza, Sinwar, 62 years old, Major, he spent nearly two decades in Israeli custody because of his role in murdering Israelis and Palestinians. He was freed by then Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu back in 2011 from prison as part of a hostage deal. There is some historic irony here mm -hmm. that we will shortly hear from the Israeli Prime Minister once again, Benjamin Netanyahu, that Yahya Sinwar, the man responsible for killing the most number of Jews since the Holocaust during the reign of Prime Minister Netanyahu, is now confirmed to be dead at the hands of Israel Defense Forces. Margaret, I want to talk to you about what we can see on screen now, which are protests for those supporting the return of the remaining hostages to Israel. This is spontaneous reaction within Israel to the announced death of Yahya Sinwar. And as you mentioned, 90 or so hostages believed to still be alive. Do you believe and do you have any source information this hour that suggests the death of Sinwar might in any way, since he was the principal interlocutor with not only Israel, but Egypt, the United States, and others involved in these ongoing negotiations, that there might be a better prospect of winning the return of those hostages in the aftermath of his death? Major, I, I put that question early, earlier today to a number of U.S. officials who say a lot depends on the choices being made in the coming days by the Israeli Prime, Min Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I spoke to some Israeli sources as well who do see this as a moment of potential opportunity. The prime minister could look at this and say that Israel has taken out the top echelon of Hamas leadership. They could use that to declare victory and to wind down the conflict in Gaza. Do they do that in a way that unlocks a deal with Hamas for the release of hostages? That's the broader question. And for the families of those, like the protesters that you see out there in the street, their number one priority is bringing home those being held against their will who have been there for more than a year now. Margaret Brennan, thank you very much. I want to bring in CBS News senior national security correspondent Charlie Daggett, who joins us from the Pentagon. There have been enormous or certainly significant measurable deployments of U.S. military personnel in the last year after the October 7th attack. Charlie, what are you hearing there at the Pentagon? Yeah, well, Major, just like everybody else, we've been waiting all day. We heard the news this morning. We've been trying to scramble for confirmation. This will potentially impact U.S. forces in the area. There are 40,000 U.S. forces there. Uh, there's a strike uh, carrier strike group in the region, several destroyers. Uh, 
a development just this week. Uh, there's been a battery, a THAAD battery, a missile battery, which is to help out Israeli air defenses. That's the first time we've seen U.S. troops in a so-called combat role inside Israel itself, manning uh, that missile battery. So the United States is already forward postured. and. Connected to this, because all roads lead back to Iran, uh, overnight the defense secretary announced a strike against Houthi targets in Yemen. That is fairly uh, uh, routine. What isn't routine was the use of B 2 uh, stealth bombers, long range. Able to carry heavy ordnance. And in his words, it's a unique demonstration to target uh, facilities uh, that our adversaries want to keep underground, no matter how deeply buried underground, hardened, or fortified, and hit five underground targets. So that's not just a message to the Houthis saying, we can reach you, we've got the reach, and we've got the weapons to do it, but also a side message to Iran. So they are already forward postured. Certainly, there'll be a raise of the alert because of what has happened, this very significant. Uh, killing of uh, Sinwar and, and the repercussions that that's going to have. But they were already ready, again, as Margaret had said. What we're waiting for here is Israel's retaliation for Iran's bombardment on October 1st. That would come first, and then we wait to see what Iran does to reply. The world awaits. Charlie Dagada at the Pentagon, thank you very much. To summarize our breaking news from the Middle East, Israel's foreign minister says Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar is dead, killed during an Israeli military operation in southern Gaza. Our coverage, rather, of this breaking news will continue on CBS News 24-7, your local news, and tonight, of course, on the CBS Evening News. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Major Garrett in Washington. Good day.